You think you've ever hit rock bottom? Oh yeah, I hit it all the time. Well, my rock bottom yeah. is when like uh, people are scared of my life and I have to go away and then I have to bring myself back up again. So like, I think I've hit it a few times and uh, you know, as long as you're around good supportive people, you should be able to, you know, and if you're strong enough, you'll be able to get out of it. You, you, you got a joke in your special, your Netflix special. Yeah. About, well, I don't even know if it's a joke. But it's right. called Louis C.K. Yes, sir. <laughs> and yeah. he, he supposedly tried to get you fired from SNL for smoking too much weed. Yes. Is, was that a real story? Yes. It's a, it's a true story. Uh, I don't want to, like, ruin the joke, but pretty much, like, he just, like, ratted me out to my boss. Yeah. It was so weird. I never really got over that. Was it personally vindicating? Yeah, I felt great. I loved it. That guy hasn't been nice to many people, so. Really? Yeah, he's not a nice guy. Well, the thing is, if something bad happens to someone and they're a nice guy, like, people don't stop talking to you and your friends don't, like, it. he's doing shows in Israel. He had to leave the country, you know what I mean? Like, Aziz's still here, people still here. Not that Aziz did half of what, you know, but, um, yeah, that dude's just a, a piece of shit. Really? Yeah, he's not a nice guy. Maybe he's changed, I don't know, but like he's not nice to young comics. Is he's just not a nice guy. It's a joke, but like he isn't, he's not like, it, some, what's also shitty is like he will be nice to you one-on-one -on -one and then like not. He won't be real with uh, other people about you. What older comics have embraced you? Oh man, Sandman's the best. <clears throat> Adam Sandler, please go see Uncut Gems, guys. It's the best movie ever he should have won an oscar still don't understand that it bugs me uh he's very very helpful and mm -hmm. sweet and checks in and bill burr and uh mulaney and like i'm 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 really lucky to have like some of the goats that like really look out and you know give me really good advice so that's another reason i'm still around what advice does sandler give you because you got a very sandler vibe about you He's always just like, you know, keep, he's, he's been through it all already, you know, mm -hmm. so he's just like, keep your head up, you know, it's, uh, this, he just tells me how to navigate through, like, you know, these, these ba the bastards that are trying to bring you down. Do you have conversations with him about when it's time to leave SNL? Yeah, I have conversations with a lot of people. It's a, it's a hard thing to do because you don't want to ever pull the trigger too early, but everybody's always been like, you'll know when you know and it'll all be all right, so. Do you know? Yeah. I like I here's the thing is like I personally think I should be done with that show because they make fun of me on it. Like That's the point, it's a comedy sketch show. No, but like I get it, but like I'm like cold open like political punchlines. Like I'm like weekend update jokes. Like gotcha. not like hot loud, not like when like when I'm not there. Like they'll be like, huh, huh, huh but pizza jerk face. And yeah, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. whose side are you on? You know, it's like a weird, I have a weird fe feeling in that building where I don't know whose team they're playing for, really. If I'm the joke or I'm in on the joke. So, like, since la I, I really wanted last year to be my uh, last year, but, um, you know, I'm still around and uh, trying, to, trying to knock it away. So, so it doesn't feel like a family environment at SNL? I mean, like, Lauren's the shit, and he's, like, the best, and has treated me with nothing but love and he's like a father figure to me but you know as far as like everyone else it's like you know it's a cutthroat show every everyone's trying to get their shit on everyone wants to be the next thing you know so it's not like a loving care like you're not gonna get coddled over there mm -hmm. you know they don't they don't give a at the end of the day do you think it's because you get more attention than a lot of other cast members no, I honestly think they're just wrapped up in their own shit. I honestly, yeah. it's just like, okay, who's hosting this week? I gotta get my duck sketch on. Like, I gotta do it this week. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just like we we have so little time, and you know the fear of getting fired there. Your first three years is horrible. You're just like every day I'm getting fired. So it's just everybody's just trying to pound their work on there, and you know you gotta do what you gotta do. Did you feel that way? You felt like you were getting fired yeah. for you? every day. I was like, this is the day. This is it. And I just, it just never came. It's scary to work over there. How do you think SNL Springfield you as a comedian, though? Oh, being able to perform live and like have to not f up, uh, even though I f up and laugh all the time. It's definitely made me, uh, I feel like, smarter. I feel like everybody there is so smart. Uh, and I feel like the unfunniest one there, like improv sketch and doing all that shit is such a different world. I really learned a lot from like how to how to get from A to like B, like how to make like a sketch. 
Now, when it comes to being the butt of the jokes at SNL, why not just tell them they can't joke on your personal life? Because then, like, I'm a hypocrite. Like, I can't tell. That's what they do. That's their show. Like, if I'm just fodder now, though, maybe mm -hmm. I shouldn't be there. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. Okay. Have you expressed that? Yeah. I've been like, yeah, I'm just like, I literally was just like, picture what it's like to be made fun of and then cut to immediately. And then try to gain the audiences, like get them on your side without being like, look at this idiot. Like you try to do that. And, and so when you do come on Weekend Up A Date, you kind of have no choice but to be self-deprecating, right? Yeah, well I gotta be, uh, and well that's just my type of. like humor but also like yeah you gotta be because they think i'm dumb like i'm literally painted out to be like this big dumb idiot like even all my sketches are just me being like okay sure you know so it's just like i have to so you've outgrown it is what you're saying yeah i think everybody outgrows it and i think for what i could do on the show which is just barely anything and it's just we can update i feel like i've done like 30 of those and i just feel like yeah I, i've done as much as i can over there but happy to be there as, as long as Lauren likes me. I mean, you're going to be another SNL success story, though, at the end of the day. You got, I hope so. You got nice. Big Time Adolescence. You got the Netflix special. You got King of Staten Island. Don't you mean like Suicide Squad or some shit? Yes, sir. And I just saw you got captive in The Rookie. Yes. So how many other stuff, you, other projects you got coming up? I think I'm shooting like uh, maybe a flick or two over the summer. So we're just, uh, we're all just writing and getting, getting shit together. It's time to leave SNL, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, it's I don't. I just don't want to sound like that. Like, buff, buff, but I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, I just feel like there's a time and a place, and like, I just also really enjoy writing movies and shit. It's like a lot of. It's a lot of fun to like sit in a writer's room and, you know, create like that. How often do you still battle with depression? Oh, I'm always depressed all the time. Um, I have to constantly bring myself out of it. Like I wake up depressed, but like I'm like, okay, now I know my steps because like you learn from real. Like now I have to go outside and be in the sun for a little bit, or go for a walk, or like start the day in this way. It's all just programming yourself to trick your brain, you know. Were you ever suicidal? Yeah, all the time. But I can't because I got a mom and a sister and like a family. So like I've always been suicidal, but I've never had like the balls, you know, which I'm very uh, lucky. Mm -hmm. Does your work not make you feel better? It's the only thing. I yeah. love it. I love writing. I love hanging. They're all really funny and cool and stand up and yeah, it's the, it's the ultimate distraction. I freak out. Uh, I don't have mirrors in my house. What? In my basement. Because I live in the basement and 
my mom and my sister live upstairs and they have mirrors, but I don't have no mirrors. No mirrors? No, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. I had a really rough time in high school, so like, I still have like, PTSD from that shit, where I'm just like, uh. But you used to get teased in high school or something? Oh, all the time. It was so confusing. How do you stop running from yourself? Yeah, I, that's something I have to work on. I have to, I'm definitely working on uh, trying to love myself more and be less insecure. And uh, I'm doing a lot of DBT therapy, which is uh, dialectical behavior, which is Oh, like, break that down. Yeah, it's pretty much for people that have like mental illness uh, and it teaches you steps and ways uh, to combat uh, like depressive feelings and shit like that. And it's super helpful. So if you guys ever need help, you should check out DBT and CBT, which is cognitive, cognitive behavior, behavior therapy. therapy. I do CBT. Yeah. How, how much do you go to therapy? Uh, I go two people once a week. So two, two sessions a week. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's just sitting there and just talking. But like, it's, you know, it's, it's always been helpful to me. I do not care very much about what the industry thinks of me uh, at all. Uh, learn that from the Sandman. Uh, you know, they'll love you or they'll hate you. It doesn't matter. What matters is your friends and family in front of you.